To discuss, uh, we're joined by Lasiba Matata from Investment Solutions. Great to have you with us, uh, Lasiba. Was this the right decision? Well, it was, it was well expected, given what has happened out of the Federal Reserve, who expressed concern of the volatility that's happening in global markets, mm. particularly around the angst of the Chinese slowdown and its fall in the equity markets. So they, the Fed, left interest rates unchanged. And that really gave the, the, the Saab uh, cues of what they need to do in terms of monetary <coughs> policy. There's no reason to hike right now. Mm. We have heightened levels of retrenchments that are all planned or introduced in the non-mining sector, also in the mining sector. In fact, there are reports that the CCM, the CCM, um, the CCMA mm. is having a heightened number of cases that they're looking at around retrenchments. And in it is the small and medium enterprises that are really in the effect of a weakened domestic demand. Under that scenario, it is not likely that the, the, you know, the, the South African Reserve Bank will hike interest rates. They, they don't want to strain this economy so strained, like you, you, you're talking about job losses, just the pressure, the pressure. that people are under. Um, and, and you've mentioned that it's linked to these global forces. So yeah. let's start with China, because I was interested in, in the wording he used today. Yeah. He said, um, hopefully China would avoid a hard, hard landing, landing, but mentioning that word, a hard landing, yeah. a, a significant can drop uh, in, in growth there. Uh, do, do you think that the, the bank is quite um, worried about China? I mean, he, he even said policy uncertainty uh, mm -hmm. in China. It is a worry, and uh, it does reflect that they are worried themselves. If you looked at economic ac activity indicators, electricity production, for example, mm -hmm. out of China, it's growing at rates below 5%. And that gives you cues of what really is happening on the economic front. The authorities out of Beijing talk about a 7% growth. And now we're seeing economic activity indicators suggesting that it is below 5%. Uh, around those numbers, that is potentially a hard landing. Mm. But it's all admirable for any economy to be growing at 5%, but for the Chinese economy, 5% 5, 5 is, quite a, is, quite a, is quite a hard landing. Why is it happening? Its stock market increased by 150% in six months, uh, a few months ago towards the end of last year. Now falling about 40%, and that has, has caused havoc within the Chinese authorities. They've tried to intervene in that market, and, and, and that's problematic. Mm. The other side Showing to Showing that it, they, they're weak in, in a sense, um, because uh, Chinese intervention used to work very well, didn't it? But, uh, but on the stock markets now, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to show that the Beijing-style intervention in stock markets mm. work because they continue to fall despite the intervention that came out of the authorities. Okay, so that would be considered a hard landing. It would be devastating for our mining our houses, our, our RAND. And, and he was talking about this risk to inflation that comes from mm. the RAND. Um, mm. It could push prices up. Are, are you willing to speculate that that RAND is so crucial? Do we know how low it could go, given the uncertainty right now? The volatility in the RAND is quite concerning, which is what he was talking about also here. Before the, yesterday, the RAND was around 13 quarter, and now it's at 13 and 3 quarters. And it, it, the volatility is so abrupt and concerning. When you look at what could happen is that it could, it could just it, it could depreciate much further from here. In discussion with some of our asset managers in my, in my company, we had found that most of them have actually expected a weakened currency on the long-term basis. Right. Or they could pull back, we, we're likely to see it fall out of bed. So that means that interest rates, uh, well, we know the next move likely to go up, um, but we don't know when, correct? And that will also be dependent on what happens to the Fed. The only problem about a weak currency is that it feeds through to inflation. Now we're seeing grain prices go growing at 38% year on year. Sure. Which means food inflation, although muted now, higher but muted, is likely to deteriorate further. And that will reach into meat prices, it will reach into feed stocks for, for all animals, including, including sheep, etc. 
With that, you're going to see heightened in inflation mm -hmm. coming through, given that rain, the rain season in the last time has been very devastating with the, with the drought that we found in our country. The rand was expected to get even worse if the U.S. raised interest rates. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't, which gave the Reserve Bank a bit of a breather. Okay. Uh, but he was quite adamant today, saying we don't follow what's happening in the U.S. We can raise rates uh, before they do, which, which they did in July already. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you agree? He was sort of saying South Africa is steering its own ship. Correct, definitely. Because we look at, they look at internal factors, they, they, you know, we're a sovereign and we, we, we basically make decisions despite what happens out of the Fed. Most definitely, I think South Africa stands on its own, not quite influenced but by the But there are decisions. these global forces influencing everything as well. So, Unfortunately, being a small, open economy, we are, we are influenced by a lot of factors that come out of China of, of late and also out of the U.S. You, we can't make decisions in isolation, but monetary authorities are very independent and they will look at the domestic factors mm. when they make decisions on interest rates. Although we'll be impacted by what happens outside, but the bottom line comes from what, what happens domestically. Okay, so Lasiba, you've given me no good news uh, tonight. <laughs> Should we at least cling to, to what he's saying that we are likely to avoid a recession? Correct. So th th those are important words because we've seen a weak Q2 number. So going forward, just on statistical base effects, it's very difficult to see a protracted recession in our economy. However, we're in recessionary conditions. Mm. Recession being defined as two quarters of negative growth, uh, likely we're going to not see that. But we're in recessionary conditions. Unemployment is rising. Um, and, and companies continue to retrench workers. And that, to me, is the biggest concern because if you don't have a labor force that is big, so people are falling out of the labor force, problematic. All the social, the social instability that come with that, uh, it's, it's, it's not good, mm -hmm. given already a high level of unemployment in the country. And, and talk of a jobs bloodbath in the steel sector, the mining sector. Given that environment, what do you think about uh, the president announcing a new mining minister? Sure. <laughs> that, that was a surprise. Mm. Um, Many people shocked. We, we didn't see that coming, considering what's happening in that industry. A few, a few weeks before, there was a whole machinations about, are we going to take the license away, are we going to give it back? What are we going to do about the strikes that are likely to happen in the gold sector? What about the certainty about policy? What this has done is, is intensified all the issues that were present in that sector. Mm. It's not helping to have people changing overnight uh, in, in a sector that is beaten up. If you look at stocks on, on, on the JSE that are commodity-based, beaten up. The outlook on a macro basis, we're talking about a weak China, we're talking about Europe that's not growing fast, all suggest a weakened outcome, even structurally so, on commodity prices. So in South Africa, we continue to slide down in the rankings about ease of doing business, particularly in the mm -hmm. mining sector. And it's so important, that relationship, uh, which, like you say, the, the minister was speaking to the sector. There, there was uh, groundwork laid, Structure. basically. Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of people are staggered by that decision. Yeah. Thank you for your analysis tonight. That Thank was Lesiba Motata from Investment Solutions.